what it do, what it do, Yankees universe. Welcome back to another episode of the pregame report on this Wednesday, April 10th. Like always, I'm your guy Hector, hanging out with my main guy from down south, my guy Damian Serrano. Damian, how you, how you feeling, go. my guy? Oh, I'm how loving it, man. Well. 10 and 2, well, how you think I'm feeling? We're feeling oh, great, man. Speak 10 and 2. Best, the, uh, best uh, record in the league, man. Let's go. Best record in Major League Baseball. The first team to get to 10 wins. Granted, the Dodgers got to 10 wins, but they had a few extra games before uh, more. They played a couple of extra games more than the Yankees, so I really don't count that. The Yankees, they got to 10 wins. And what more can you say about what's going on right now? You brought it up with 10 and 2. I see people online talking about this feels like 2009. And the one thing to note when you compare this team to 2009. 2019, they got off to a rocky start. They weren't out the gates like, you know, a well-oiled machine. Alex Rodriguez, he missed the first uh, few, um, a big part of the uh, beginning of the season as well, came back against Baltimore after his hip surgery, and that's where the team started taking off. But this team right now, 10-2, and a well-oiled machine. We'll talk about the lineup, but let me get your take about what I just said of the game from last night. Go ahead, Dane. Man, 10 and 2, as we all know. Um, the team actually reminds me of the start of, of uh 21, 22, when we uh went off on that that huge start where uh we had the best record all the way up into the uh all-star game. Um the only difference between this team and that team is that this team is built better than that team. Uh, we all knew coming into that season they kind of played over their heads. This team is playing exactly where they should be playing. Uh, from our starters to one through nine. Uh, Volpe, Lord Doogie starting to get it together. Big mm-hmm. G starting um, to quiet a lot of people. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, one through nine, again, it's been great. Defense um, has been great in big spots. They still need to work on it a little bit. We are, I think it's tough with number five when it comes to errors. So we need to mm-hmm. clean that up a little bit. Uh, but other than that, you couldn't ask for a better start than what we have at 10 or 2. No way. No. Nah. Definitely, definitely. I want to shout out the chat before we continue. My guy Aiden is in the building. First one to show up. Aiden Diwali, how are you doing, my guy? Salute to you. Jonathan is in the building. My friend from Yankees Twitter, Sierra's in the building. Sierra, how you doing? And, of course, the wise sage in the Yankee universe, my guy Sunil is in the building. Sunil, how you doing? I hope everything is right. I hope when you was in Texas, that solar eclipse didn't mess up, you know, your electrical grid and your power and stuff like that. So now I, I hope, all, hope all as well. But um, you bring up John Carlos Stanton. Matter of fact, I'm going to take a step back. You bring up the 2002, uh, 22 team. When you look at that team and that starting staff, one, it had Gary Cole, which is a big factor why that team is doing good. Absolutely. We don't have Gary Cole right now, right? And when you look at Marcus Stroman, he's definitely a better option than Jamison Tyone. Right, Nestor Cortez so far is a better option than Jordan Montgomery, right? And I want to talk about Carlos Rodon before we continue. When it comes to Carlos Rodon, a big improvement on him has been that cutter. He throws that cutter right now 14 to 16% of the time. Last year, he threw that cutter 0%. He wasn't throwing that cutter. So when you have a dynamic fastball like he does and you have a wipeout slider, you need another pitch in the middle. So that cutter, right, if you're not throwing the slider, if you're throwing the slider too many times, hitters, they'll get used to seeing it. But if you can mix in that cutter and keep people off their toes, you throw in that slider, that's a wipeout pitch right there. What's your Absolutely. thoughts on Carlos? Go ahead, Dane. Not only that, but he's added, yesterday he added in that changeup. He featured well, the changeup yeah. yesterday, which was great because obviously, you know, going to your righties and your, specifically your lefties, that's fading away on your lefties. Now you uh, bring it in the cutter. So now Carlos has become a pitcher, um, yes. a legit pitcher. And what we always, what we wanted from last season. Um, obviously last season, I think bar none, it was an injury plague season. He forced himself in there when really he probably shouldn't have been out there in the first place. So I think mm-hmm. the version of Carlos Rodon that we get in this year is who we expected. Um, yes. He's at a 1.72 ERA, obviously only three games. But you really couldn't ask for a better start from Carlos Rodon. With Garrett mm-hmm. Cole being out, he's picked it up. Stroman picked it up. The entire staff has picked it up, let's be honest. So um, right now, we have nothing to complain about with Rodon. Um, he went deep into the game yesterday. People are going to say it's the Marlins. 
listen, they're a major league team, just like any other team. And baseball sometimes is like football. Any given Sunday, you can be beat. Same thing with baseball. Any given night, you can be beat. So let's give Rodon his flowers. He started out yeah. with Houston, went through Arizona, now into uh, Miami. All three starts, he was legit. Man, give Carlos Rodon his flowers, man. He's earning it right now. Yeah, he, he definitely is. I want to shout out a couple more people that joined this. Shout out to old Sarge in the building. Sarge, how you doing, my guy? Salute, Sarge. I hope all is well. My friend Erica Garcia. Shout out to you, Erica. Erica says, what's going on, guys? Feeling under the weather today, but we'll be watching from the sidelines. Erica, I hope you feel better. And hope do me a favor. Better. Go get yourself some Vicks. Put some Vicks on your feet and put some <laughs> socks on like our grandmas used to do back oh, in the yeah. day, Erica. Okay? Shout out to my guy, Richie Rivera from Empire State of Baseball. Hello, Rich. people. How you doing, Rich? My hope God. all is well. But um, nah, spot on. When If this is the – and granted, it's two starts. Three starts, I mean, with Carlos Rodon. Yeah. I'm going to need to see it for 25, 26 more starts for the rest of the season, right? Absolutely. But if this is the version – that you're getting from uh, from Carlos Rodon. And this is the version that you're going to get of Marcus Stroman. When Garrett Cole comes back, how can you not like that that one, two, three punch? Garrett Cole, like who, threw, who threw about like 25 pitches a couple of days ago, right, at felt the stadium, good. you know, felt good in the day of the solo eclipse, so he felt good. But how Absolutely. can you not like the possibility of getting Garrett Cole back with this version of Carlos Rodon and this version of Marcus Stroman? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. You got to put his top five in the league when it comes to pitching staffs. Um, mm -hmm. Nesta can build off of what Nesta did. I mean, Nesta dropped his ERA from 6.31 to 3.50. So mm -hmm. now you add in Nesta Cortez and you add in, like you said, Stroman, Rodon, Garrett Cole at the top. Let's pray and hope that Garrett comes back as strong as he did last mm -hmm. season. And how can you, uh, how can you, how can you deny what this team can do in the playoffs? Uh, bottom yeah. line, especially with Cole at the top of that of that rotation, and you can switch switch swap any way you want, whether Rodon two, Stroman two, whichever way you want. But I'll take those top three against any team in the league, um, including the Dodgers. So, mm -hmm. um, listen, I, I'm I'm through the roof happy with this uh, pitching staff right now. Yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm the same way, Damian. Because um, when you see what's this starting staff right now, they've been able to correct or quiet quiet is the better word than correct yeah, they've been able absolutely. to quiet the critics this offseason when we missed out on yamamoto when we didn't trade spencer jones for corbin burns when we didn't trade for jesus lazardo who Thank we God. lit the fuck up a couple of nights ago when i was at the stadium sorry for cursing <laughs> but who we it's lit true. up at the stadium right um so the yankees have been able this starting staff Quiet the critics. And when you look at it right now, I think the Yankees starting staff, I get it. 12 games. I think that fifth or third in the, in the league when it comes to that ERA, a 2.68 ERA, if, if I'm not exactly. mistaken, a 2.64, something in that degree in, the, in that range. So when you look at it, this starting staff is good. And guess what? We're not even whole because the no. reigning Cy Young winner, he's on his way back sooner rather than later, Dane. Absolutely. And you got the bullpen. We got reinforcement coming into the bullpen. Trevino, mm -hmm. uh, you got Efrost coming in the bullpen, coming up soon. So reinforcements are coming in. Um, the entire pitcher staff, top to bottom, has been yeah. rock steady. So we have no complaints on that. And anybody that had a complaint coming in prior to the first game, they're no longer having those complaints. So, mm -hmm. uh, again, I'll take the top three against any uh, playoff team in the league right now. Uh, I got a couple of uh, chats that I want to highlight real quick. My guy Sunil says, I'm sitting here watching this live stream with my blitz ball bat in hand, doing anything and everything, Soto shuffle stretches and laying down butts. Shout out to my guy Sunil. And then Erica says, Rodon is a completely different pitcher. With that changeup and cutter, even he realized how effective it was because when he struck out Bell with the changeup, he was like, wow. He sees the impact. Absolutely. Last year, Carlos Rodon, I'm going to say last year, and, and when he was with San Francisco and, yeah. and when he was with the White Sox, he was a thrower, yeah. right? A thrower. Now it seems like with Matt Blake and him mixing in that cutter, he is a pitcher now. Absolutely. He's just not a guy who's just throw, going out there and throwing his fastball and I'm going to blow it past you 95, 98 miles per hour. He is a Pitcher now, he can command the strike zone. He knows how to mix it up. And like Erica says, 
once he saw, oh, I could strike people out with this changeup, I'm going to start going to it even more. Oh, yeah. Forget about it. Not, not only that, but let's shout out Andy Pettit. You can see the effect. Yes. Yeah. The shout effect that Andy Pettit. Pettit. Yeah, yeah. That cutter, that's a, that's a Pettit cutter. So, mm-hmm. you know, shout out to Andy Pettit um, working with Rodon all the offseason. You could tell they worked extremely hard on that pitch, and it's paying off right now. So yeah. I hope he continues to uh, to build on that, compete, and uh, have that confidence to throw it each and every game, whether you get rocked or not. Rodon, please don't don't steer away from it. Um, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna lengthen your whole your whole season. Yeah, definitely. I want to uh, just highlight the box score from yesterday. So when you look at the box score, the Yankees had Gleyber Torres. He was 0 for 5. He was moved out in the lineup today. We'll talk about that later on. Absolutely. Juan Soto was 1 for 4 with an RBI. And I just got to say, the love that Juan Soto gets <laughs> at Yankee Stadium, it is unmatched. We are just – we are not even in at a full month into the season. I kid you not, I was sitting in right field – Right by the foul pole yesterday, Damien, almost right, yeah. literally right at the front. He interacted with the with the fans in right field during the games more times than I can count. More Absolutely. times than that. It was literally every inning, at least two, three, four times, he's turning around interacting with the crowd. Juan, so to all you delusional <laughs> Met fans that are out there, to all you delusional Red Sox fans that are out there, I'm going to keep on saying it. Juan Soto is not going nowhere. No He's way. not going nowhere, okay? <laughs> the only way, only, only place that he is going, and Sunil brought it up. I mean, big time Jerry bro, brought it up. The only place yeah. that he is going is Monument Park in Yankee Stadium when he retires. That's it. Juan Soto is a – bro, it's so real. This is how it is. Like, a lot of you guys won't be able to understand what I'm about to say just because, you know, ustedes no es boricua o latino o dominicano. Or you guys, you guys aren't – you guys, you guys aren't from the Caribbean, but he came out and one of his walk up songs was Tipico. <laughs> he was playing yes. Tipico music. Yeah. And I'll tell you this when the Dominicans heard the Tipico music when he came up, they lost their mind. It was literally in the sixth inning. He came up to play and he was, they was playing Tipico. Everybody was like, yo, he's playing, they played it. And it was like the <laughs> old school Tipico from like the 80s. Rich, I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize, Pau Zong. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? I know you feel a little bit left out. My apologies. Don't worry. I play some Frank Sinatra later on in the show so you can feel <laughs> more in tune. Right? But no, the, again, he ain't going nowhere. That's all I got to say about that. Go ahead, no. Dave. No, yo, let me tell you what. That Six City, there were so many Dominican flags, Puerto Rican flags. You listen, every Latino flag was out there. You saw Dominican, Puerto Rican, Colombian, Venezuela. You saw it all. And listen, he's home. He literally feels at home in yes. the Bronx, in the pinstripes. I said it before. I said it again. We'll say it probably for 162 games. My man is going nowhere. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick Swisher said it best. He was, Nick Swisher had an interview um, with Meredith, and he was like, listen, if you guys think Juan is not at home, and you think that he's not as comfortable as a, anybody could be, then listen, you guys are crazy. Juan Soto will be a Yankee for the rest of his career, point blank period. Fact. I want to shout out one of the craziest Boricuas that I know in the world. My guy, Erdon Sicario, is What's in up? the building. How you doing? He says, yeah. What up, Hector <laughs> El Father? Damien was good. Chat, it's been a long time. No C. We miss you over here, Don Sicario. You got to come back. Let me know when you're free, my guy. We got to join in some to some conversations. But no, going back to the lineup from yesterday. And folks, we got like over 50 people in the building. If you guys can, smack the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Share it out as well. If you're on social media, hit the like button. Hit, hit the repost on X. But uh, after Juan Soto, Aaron Judge. He was, you know, 0 for 1, but he did have three solid walks. I mean, he was 1 for 1. He had three walks. He had a double as well in the game. Uh, John oh, yeah. Carlos Stanton, big big G, getting sexy with it. Big G is getting jiggy with it. He is Let's 1 go. for 4 with an RBI. He had a couple of um, hard hits also that they could have went 50-50 Absolutely. either way. But Big G is hitting 250. 250. Yes. Big G, just, just to let you guys know. You got Anthony Volpe with a 375 batting average. You got Juan Soto with a 348 batting average. This the third highest batting average on this team is John Carlos Stanton. Yes, sir. Put some respect on John Carlos Stanton's name. Listen, I, I've been saying it and I'm gonna keep preaching it. 
And so everybody calls me crazy, except for Celso. Celso, of course, you ride it with me on this. Stanton is the comeback player of the year. He will be as long, bar none, if he stays healthy. Let me tell you, tell you guys something. Everybody disrespects Stanton, but it's called spade to spade. When it came to the playoffs, we rode Stanton's back, not Judge's back. Um, the guy has been on top of his – he's been an all-star. He's been an MVP. And – He's made all the money a baseball player can make in the world. So for him to continue to work on his on his craft, losing 30 pounds in the offseason, that's not a that's not a small amount of weight for a guy's size. 30 pounds in the offseason, came out looking great um, physically, and now he's starting to uh, really click with the bat. Listen, give G his flowers um, and the fan base. Yo, just embrace it. Embrace him. Don't I, I get it? He's been he's been a shit can the last couple of seasons. Excuse my language, but listen, this is a perennial All Star MVP, and he's always held himself accountable. And you, there's not many players you can say that about when it comes to to the New York Yankees and in baseball in general. Most players are going after their fan bases when they go at them. John Carlos mm-hmm. always kept it respectful, whether it's yes. been with the fan base, whether it's been with reporters. Whoever it is, the guy has always been respectful, held himself accountable. And more importantly, he held himself accountable to the ultimate level this year, getting himself in shape, coming out this season, doing what he's doing. Um, listen, I can't say much more about G- Big G. He's doing what he's doing, and um, yeah. he's going to shut a lot of people up this season. Yeah, no, definitely. You, you see it, the work that he put all, or put put in in the offseason, it's paying off tremendously. Shout out to my guy, Donnie Clark in the building. Donnie, A1 since day one, my guy. So, Salute Donnie. to you. Sunil, Sunil said, I lost nearly 30 pounds between last offseason and now. 237 down to 209, Damien. Salute to you, My Sunil. man, Sunil. Keep doing your Salute thing, Salute to you. Sunil, I just cracked the 50, the 50 mark when it comes to the weight loss. So more than 50 pounds, your boy's down since the New Year. Yo, Chad, give Hector some love, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I called Hector the other day. My man was in the gym, uh, full gear. <laughs> I was like, yo, he's getting it in. So, yeah, everybody, yo, show some Hector some love in the chat. My man is putting in that work, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Like you, you did FaceTime me when I was in the gym. That's hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I want to read the rest of the lineup. Anthony Rizzo was 2 of 4 um, in yesterday's game. Anthony Volpe, 0 for 4, but he almost had a home run. I was right yeah. there. I caught it. It was literally like that. We were close next to the foul pole. Anthony okay. Volpe is still having good at-bats, even though he was 0 for 4 in yesterday's game. Verdugo. Verdugi getting doogie with it. He was yes, 1 for uh, 3 with a home run. His first home run as new, his second home run as New York Yankee, I mean. And then you got John Birdie. He was one for three as well. Austin Wells was 0 for 3 from the field. So we got the starting lineup for today. We're going to have this conversation. I'm going to bring it up because Anthony Volpe is in the leadoff spot after Man. 12 games. Anthony Volpe is in the leadoff spot. We're going to have to have this conversation. You know, I'm, I'm 50-50 when it comes to it, right? I would have liked the Yankees to keep him in the lower part of the lineup just to have some insurance down there. Um, and for him to build on that confidence, don't just throw him into the fire. But at the same time, I do not hate it just because look, looking at Anthony Volpe from this year to last year is a stark difference. I'll, I'll let you go before I bring up the next graphic where I got some some uh, some more of the Absolutely. analytics that supports my, my take. Go ahead, brother. And shout I'm out to everybody to- that's in the chat. If you guys can, <laughs> smack the like button. And like Erica did, Throw the dog emoji in the chat for our guy, Doogie. Oh, bro, ahead, bro, bro, bro. Let's go. Um, listen, Vol- I'm 50-50 like you when it comes to Volpe. Um, however, the guy has shown an unbelievable amount of confidence this season. And he's completely changed his game, his swing. If if any time, then let's, let's throw him in the fire right now. We're 10-2 and two right now. If there's any time to see what Volpe has at the start of the lineup, at the very leadoff, it's now. Um, and it can't, let's face it, it can't be any worse than what glaber has been giving us at the yeah. top spot. Um, you know, glaber has been seeing pitches, but Glaber has not been hitting the way a leadoff guy should, doesn't have the speed that a leadoff guy should. And I think Glaber is best where he's at right now in the lineup today in a uh, RBI situation. So if we're going to put anybody in there right now, then hey, listen, 10-2, give Opie the opportunity. Again, I'm 50-50. Um, I was one of those that said, you know, give him some time at that the sixth, seventh, eighth spot. 
to uh, build on it. But the guy, the kid has shown so much progression. He's shown so much confidence. I mean, he's even gotten to the point where he's going at umpires now. So uh, we didn't see that out of Volpe last season whatsoever. Oh, yeah. So my man is going at umpires, calling his balls and strikes. He's mm-hmm. understanding the zone. And by him doing that, that just shows that he understands the zone. So, uh, listen, take the shot. It can't hurt us any more than uh, Glaber's done. Not that Glaber's, you know, terrible, but it can't hurt us any more than what Glaber's done so far. So let's take it. Uh, hold on. I just want to get his – I just want to get his – because when it comes to the Miami Marlins, their manager, right, uh, I believe it's Skip Schumacher. I just want to make sure. Yeah, Skip oh, yeah. Schumacher. He said it, talking about Anthony Volpe, <laughs> that Anthony Volpe – is on the trajectory to become a superstar, right? Oh, yeah. Us Yankee fans that watch the games, this is something that we we wanted to believe in. But when you have the opposing manager from another major league organization saying that your second year shortstop is on a trajectory to stardom, that right there is oh, amazing. Yeah. One thing people got to know when it comes to players that eventually became superstars eventually won MVPs, some of them struggled in the first year in the big leagues. Mike Trout Trout struggled his first year in the big leagues. Derek Jeter struggled his first year in the big leagues. You know who struggled their first year in the big leagues but then was an all-star their second year and was MVP? Dustin Pedroia for the Boston Red Sox. His first year, he struggled, and then he came his second year, won an MVP, and was an all-star as well. Not saying that Volpe is going to win an MVP. I I know that. But I'm just saying, when you look at players that you can have the tools when it comes to your speed, the defense, the bat, you can have all those tools. But there's one tool that you cannot teach, and that's heart, and that's motivation. Motivation is heart. You cannot teach that. Someone either has it or someone doesn't. Perfect example, Nesta Cortez. Exactly. Nesta Cortez, if he had, and I don't don't think there's any shade or anything, uh-huh. but let's compare Nesta Cortez and Carlos Rodon. Yeah. If Nesta Cortez, with his heart, with his work, work ethic, if he had the talent, the stuff like Carlos Rodon, oh, that's a Hall of Fame it. pitcher right there. Absolutely. That's a Hall of Fame pitcher. But if he had the heart and mental of Carlos Rodon with his stuff, He's not even in the big leagues. And that's no. no knock and that's no shade to Carlos Rodon. That's a lot of people, they got to learn how to become a pitcher. And Carlos Rodon, you see that this year. So, again, that's not no shade and no knock on Carlos no. Rodon. We just know that Nessa Cortez, he had to bust his ass and work for everything he had at every level that he was at. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you anymore. Not only with Opie, but he's also, you could tell, he's starting to command. Um, he's, start, he's starting to become a leader in that, in that locker room, a leader in that dugout. You see these guys are feeding off of him. Um, you know, the moment he hits these big hits, these home runs, that dugout is going crazy. Um, mm-hmm. So to have the veterans back him the way they have and the way Volpe has embraced it, listen, um, don't be shocked if Volpe becomes um, a captain type of player once Judgey goes away. Um, sorry, you know, man. he uh, absolutely has that confidence and he uh, – he, he demands it at this point. And you can tell that him just being in the box. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, he's going at umpires, which means to me he demands that respect. Yeah. So um, I love it. I, you can't say any more about Bobby at this point. Yeah. He's over exceeded all expectations. I want I want to highlight my guy, Mr. Worldwide Mayberry is in the building. Worldwide L, how you doing? Salute, salute, salute. My guy, Mr. Michael Caputis is in the it's building. Up. Caputo. I love you, my guy. Just know that. Yes. Never change. Never change, my guy. I, I, I appreciate you, Caputo. Everybody Don't shout out me. Mr. Caputo. Man, listen, real quick. Stick, uh, you listen, Caputo, me and Hector were kind of talking backstage, and I'll tell you what, man. My flowers and tip, and my, uh, tip of the hat to you, brother. Um, yo, totally different person. I love the, like, like he said, I love the, the ex Michael Caputo, the Twitter Michael Caputo. Brother, you keep doing your thing. And just yes. like, like Hector said, just be who you are, man. I love it. Mm-hmm. Exactly, Caputo. Keep doing your thing, brother. Appreciate you. Um, and like Worldwide L says, we have a new leadoff hitter, fellas. Absolutely. So I'm going to bring Absolutely. up the lineup. Obviously, I, I, I brought the name up, Anthony Volpe. Um, Dame, read the rest of the lineup for the rest of the people, and then we'll go over on the person that's not in the lineup. Go ahead, brother. Absolutely. Of course, we got Mr. Juan Pacheco Soto hitting number two, the cat. 
hitting three. Of course, we don't have to say his name. Big G at four. Riz at five, which I do like that combo. Uh, we got Glaber at six, where I think he's exactly where he needs to be. Uh, Doogie coming up at seven. Birdie at eight. And Trevi at uh, nine. And, of course, Mr. Stro Show at the pitcher. Let's get it on the bump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Marcus Stroman going for the shutter. I mean, going for the sweep today. You, you got to light it. But the one person that's missing in the lineup Probably. is Cabrera. It's yeah. going to be three days that he hasn't played. Is hope everything is all right with Cabrera. I know the Yankees made the trade for John Birdie. And it's not like Cabrera wasn't producing. He was definitely no. producing. But no Cabrera against... The Marlins, is it a matchup thing? Because we did have they did have Lazardo, who's a lefty, right? Yeah. They did have Puck, who's a lefty. And I think the starting pitcher tonight as well for the Marlins is a lefty as well. And when they use Oswaldo Cabrera, they're using him primarily as a left-handed hitter. So with yeah. Birdie being a right-handed hitter, it's, it's more of a platoon situation yeah. in my eyes. What, what's your thoughts on that, Dane? Um, I pray that it's not an injury. However, mm -hmm. um, listen. He he was at he was batting right the other day. He was hitting lasers. So Cabrera can do it on both sides. And my worry with that is you taking steam. If he's not hurt, then you're taking steam off of a great start of a season for a young yeah. kid um, like Cabrera who needs to build that confidence and continue to build his confidence. So if it's not an injury, then I'm a little against it because he's he, he's he's he deserves that role and he's earned that spot. Birdie hasn't, yeah. no disrespect to Birdie, but Birdie hasn't earned that spot Cabrera has. Um, mm -hmm. And there was a time where it was just Soto and Cabrera hitting on this lineup. So yeah. he absolutely earned it. So I pray that it's not an injury. But in the flip mm -hmm. side of that, if it's a matchup thing, I don't agree with it either. Okay. But I just confirmed it, looking it up <laughs> right now. The starting pitcher for the Miami Marlins today is a left-handed pitcher by the name of Weathers. So they do have a lefty on the mound. 0-1 um, on the season with a 4-plus ERA. So he's got nine innings pitched so far. Listen, the Yankees like their lefty write-up combinations. That's why John Carlos Stanton is in the cleanup spot and not Anthony Rizzo, even though Anthony Rizzo, he has shown in his career he can still hit left-handed yeah. pitching. That's what the Yankees like to do. But when it comes to Birdie, Erica brought it up in the chat. I'm – let me bring it up real quick. I think I highlighted it. Um, she said, we're to keep such a hot bat on the bench for, for three games in a row, lefty matchup or not. But Birdie, he has looked good at third base yeah. in the last few games. And that's one thing, at least Birdie defensively as well, yeah. defensively has been good, even though. I think in the game yesterday there was an error that he had that, that yeah. resulted into a, a an unrun by Carlos Rodon. He struggled right there, but defensively he's looked solid. John Birdie. Yeah. It's not like he doesn't look. He doesn't. He's not striking out a ton. No. He puts the ball in play. He has speed. He has a solid glove at third base. So it's not a a, a crazy or a drop off no. if there's any drop off. No, absolutely no. Birdie. Um, Birdie's exactly as advertised. Contact bat speed. Um, really good on the, really good on the, uh, on the hot corner. So, um, you know, I'm not mad with the birdie thing. Um, I just, at this point, I just think Carrera earned it and, um, three games for a guy that's been as hot as he has and kind of carried the team. Let's be honest. Um, yeah, I think they, I think Booney should have respected him a little bit more by, um, by putting him in this lineup. Yeah, yeah, and, and he was at the stadium yesterday because, you know, my guy Frank Luna was taking pictures with him after the game. Frank that. Luna and my guy Jake from from the Bronx Zoo. Shout out to another person named Jake who just joined us who said, afternoon, y'all. Jake, how you doing? Salute, salute, Yo. salute. Jorge Herrera says, how you doing? Salute to you. Cabrera's a stud. Don't like Volpe in the leadoff spot. We got Alyssa Serrano in the building. Alyssa, how you doing? I agree. Cabrera has put the work in so far. So if Boom is just not putting him in, it's wrong from him. You know what? I agree with you, Alyssa. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, of course, Sierra dropping the bars. <laughs> Dom Demaco. She said, "Weather is about to is weather is about to get hit with a Bronx hurricane tonight." Let's Absolutely. Go, Absolutely. Thank you, Sierra, for the for forecast in the Bronx. <laughs> Acevedo says Cabrera won us that Houston series. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, if if Cabrera is not in the lineup in that Houston series, we we probably go two and two or with three and one. I mean, we're one and three against the against the Houston Astros. It's a different song we're singing right now than we're actually singing. If Absolutely. Cabrera wasn't in that lineup. Oh no doubt about it. Um, 
he sh- I, again, I think he, I, I feel he should be in the lineup. But again, Birdie, uh, no disrespect to Birdie. Birdie's going to do his thing defensively. Hopefully, he can get uh, on base and uh, start stealing some stealing some bags and you know keep doing his thing. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to the matchups, I just want to put it out real quick. Um, the matchup predictor on ESPN.com it favors the Yankees seventy seven percent to 22.6% 22, 22. for the Miami Marlins. So when you look at the over and unders for tonight's game, again, it's eight and a half. Yesterday was eight and a half for the over and under, and it was under. So I'm going to ask you, Damian, another day, another dollar, another lefty on the mound for the Miami Marlins. Over and under, what do you think it's going to be? Is it going to be eight and a half over or eight and a half under? I'm going to take the under, and only because I don't think the Marlins are going to score. So... Mm -hmm. Um, I got Yankees eight, uh, seven, one. So, uh, yeah, I'm going under. Yeah. Same, same for me. I'm, I'm going under for this one. I got the Yankees winning this game six to one. Marcus Stroman is going to throw seven, eight shutout innings. He's going to be a dog. He's going to be phenomenal. And the Yankees bullpen is going to do what they got to do. But I think the hitters show up today. I think with, with Volpe going into the leadoff spot, with Juan Soto and Judge hitting behind them, Volpe is going to get some fastballs to turn oh, yeah. on. And Volpe, with this new approach to the play, and I want to bring it up real quick. Shout out to my guy, shout out to my guy Ryan Garcia over there, at Empire State uh, State Media, um, from Fireside Yankees as well. Some of the immediate skill progression that stands out when it comes to Anthony Volpe it has carried over from spring training, and their game changes. One, his whiff rate. This year, it's 28. I mean, last year, it was 28.1%. This year, it's 12.2%. So he's swinging less and missing less this year than he was last year. Now, his chase rate. Last year, his chase rate was 28.7%. This year, it's 22.6%. Leading off means being able to get on base. And this goes a long way when it comes to getting on base. Now, Damien, let me throw it over to you real quick. Let the folks know the approach that we've seen with our eyes of Anthony Volpe is day and night. It's like a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Oh. Granted, I'm telling like this. This is, the, this is how we compare it. Anthony Volpe last year is Michael Caputo in the YouTube chat. Anthony <laughs> Volpe this yeah. year is Michael Caputo on Twitter X Spaces. Right. Go ahead. Absolutely. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, you know, listen, the more I think about it, I'm okay with Volpe um, being at that leadoff with the way he's been hit playing this year. And the reason I say that, he's going to see a lot of meatballs, fastballs with Soto behind him and Judgy behind him. So if you're going to put somebody at leadoff right now, it would probably fit Volpe because of how, ha- how hot he's been, how controlled yeah. the zone he's been, and him being in that leadoff spot again, you, you, have to, you have to account for Soto being right behind him. They don't want to see Soto. They want to pitch to Volpe. If you want to get an out, then you want to go to Volpe to get that out. Not Soto, not Judge, especially being a lefty. So um, I'm I'm completely I, – I flipped the script. I'm completely – I'm not even 50-50. I'm like 80-20 right now. So I'm all right with it. Yeah. No, nah, I'm – I'm listen, again, 50-50, but after this conversation, more 80-20, 70-30, right? Am yeah. I 100%? In love with it? No, I'm not 100% in love with it. But I understand the logic around it is because Anthony Volpe, you want to ride that hot hand. Gleyber Torres hasn't been hot. You want to kickstart this offense from the top to the bottom. So you put Volpe in the leadoff spot, move Gleyber Torres to the sixth spot. Gleyber Torres, when you look at it, Volpe in the minor leagues, he he led off games. He was the one number one hitter, number two hitter, number three hitter. Gleyber Torres in the minor leagues, he wasn't leading off games. Gleyber no, Torres no. Was, wasn't a leadoff hitter. So to take Gleyber Torres, and now you're about to hit free agency, the year before you hit free agency, we exactly. want you to be a leadoff hitter now. We want you to switch your approach. Even though he has, he's up there in the league when it yeah. comes to pitches taken, he's he's, yeah. he's 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 having great at-bats. I'm not yeah. trying to – it's just oh, unlucky yes. at-bats. It's more unluck than anything else. Gleyber Torres is having phenomenal at-bats. It's not the Gleyber Torres from last year. And his – um. Not sure if you have noticed it. He doesn't have that dramatic leg kick that he no. had last year. He's not lifting down. it up all the way. He's sliding his foot. So he's going to take him a while. In spring training, he was good. That new yeah. batting stance was awesome. Now, in the regular season, it's going to take him a while to get used to that new batting stance. I would see this in the middle of April, 
I'm going to say around April 20th, when I'm going to be at the stadium for that NYYU event. Yes, sir. But in the middle, in the middle of April, I can see Gleyber Torres catching on fire when yeah. everybody else starts cooling down. So it's it's a trade off. Yeah, no, absolutely. Gleyber's gonna Gleyber's gonna feel more comfortable down in that order because that's where he's always produced. Uh, Gleyber Gleyber's always hit between five and five and seven. Uh, more recently, five or six. So Gleyber is a run producer. Uh, puts the ball in play when he needs to. The two-strike approach is amazing. He barely lifts that leg during the two-strike approach. It's basically a toe tap going the opposite way. So mm -hmm. um, I think this is a good situation for both Volpe and Glaber. Volpe because mm -hmm. his confidence, and that's only going to build his confidence with the Booney saying, listen, I got enough confidence in you to lead off for us. And Glaber, you're only going to build his confidence for him with him going back to where he's comfortable at. So I think this trade-off is, is going to work it's going to work perfect for us. So let's let's see what happens, man. But I think it's going to work perfect. We got Ronald Duffney in the chat. Ronald, how you doing? The big Duff is in the building. Salute, salute to you. Acevedo says he is the lead on the on the league right now, but we need him hitting bombs and doubles. Okay, I see what you're saying. Absolutely, yeah. Acevedo. Um, who else is in the – who else had here? Oh, Caputo had one. Caputo says, well, I've been negative about the Yankees for a while, but that has changed. Listen, Caputo, I'm going to tell you this right now. With the way that the Yankees were playing last year and the year before and just years prior, of course, we, all of us Yankee fans, we're going to criticize. It's never going to be flowers for this organization. No. This offseason, they went out there, and they went out there to, to improve this team. I was having a conversation in Twitter spaces, and somebody was like, they don't believe that – this front office will go out there and give a player a bigger uh, one player 30, 40 million dollars and then give another player 30 million dollars. Do you not guys remember not this offseason, last offseason when we re signed Aaron Judge for 40 million dollars? What else exactly. did we do that offseason, Damien? Who else did we sign? Who was the free agent we signed for 26 million dollars? Oh, Carlos we Rodon. Had Rodon, Rodon, of course. So and how, we how had... can so how can somebody say that they don't believe that this front office would re-sign Juan Soto and then go out there and try to spend on Gleyber Torres or spend on Cody Bellinger or whoever you want to when they already showed us if it makes sense, they're going to do it? Because if that That's was the case, they would have never signed Reed Rodon after, yeah. after re-signing Judge. Of course. And the best way, and let's not take into effect that once the end of the season – Cole is going to be the richest pitcher in MLB. They're going to tack on that 10th year, and he's going to be the richest pitcher in MLB. Not only that, but if anybody thinks that Judge cares about Soto making more money than him, oh. you guys are crazy. Judge is going to welcome it. He understands that this kid is young. He understands that he became a free agent five years younger than him. And, um, no, nah, that's, just, that's just nonsense. Little haters just talking. Uh, Soto's going to be with us forever. He don't care about – Judge, he don't care about the uh, the extra money that Soda's going to get over him. The only thing Judge cares about is rings. That's it. Point blank, period. He wants the next picture that he takes of the Jordan pose to be his ring and not a Michael Jordan ring. So, um, man, I'm telling you, that, that that's just nonsense. It's not going to happen. Yeah, no, Erica, I agree with you. They needed the pitching last offseason. I agree that they don't need Torres, but if Anthony Rizzo – <laughs> who's going to be gone after this year. If it Cody is. Bellinger is available, I don't think the Yankees would be shy and, and you know, wanna, wouldn't want to spend that money on Cody Bellinger. That's the point I'm making, right? If the Yankees go out there and re-sign Juan Soto, and if there's a starting pitcher who's available, like a Corbin Burns, Burns. I don't think Max the Yankees Freed. would hesitate. Max Freed, I don't think the Yankees will hesitate to add on top of Juan Soto. That's the point I was trying to make. But I agree with that, you. We definitely do not need Gleyber Torres because of all the different middle infielder prospects that we have. And don't get me started about Torres because you you say Torres' his name three times, Sierra will, will bite your head off in the chat. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sierra. You're going to cry. I don't mean to hurt your feelings on that one, but Gleyber's unfortunately not coming back. And to your point also, let's not forget the contract that the Yankees extended to Yamamoto. That was a $30 million a year contract. So if they were willing to spend that money, then, of course, they're going to be willing to spend money this offseason on whatever and whatever they want to get. So mm -hmm. Let's see what else I got in the chat. Um, uh, Sunil says, Hector giving the chat and everyone watching the finger ball style. No, I was just showing the ring. Okay, I was just showing <laughs> the ring, Sunil. Um <laughs> 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Acevedo says Soto is almost seven years younger. He will get the biggest contract. Remember, Otani got 700 because of the deferred money. Now, for me, when we bring up that conversation, and you hit it right on the head, I don't think Judge is going to care if Juan Soto's making more money when it comes to the AAV no. or even off the field money. You know how I know? Because I don't think Derek Jeter cared that Alex Rodriguez was the highest paid player in Major League Baseball when the Yankees traded for him. I don't think Derek Jeter cared in 2004, in 2005, all the way till he renegotiated his contract. It wasn't until, what, 2010 or 11 that A-Rod wasn't the highest paid player in Major League Baseball. Jeter didn't care. What do you you guys think that Judge is going to care now? Because like you said, the one thing that Aaron Judge – the the one the two knocks that you can say about Aaron Judge one yeah. he don't stay healthy that's a knock right there right yeah. last year even though he missed two months of the season the boy hit thirty seven home runs exactly. he hit thirty seven home he did more by missing two seasons last year than anybody else on the New York Mets did that's the one exactly. thing I'm gonna say right I'm sorry for shitting on the Mets but I just gotta get that sure. off my chest but when it comes to Aaron Judge those is that's a knock his second knock is he doesn't perform well in the postseason. Aaron Not Judge, no. he is a notorious below 220 hitter when it comes to that month of October. So what Aaron Judge needs to do is this this postseason, he needs to have himself the same type of postseason Barry Bonds did in, tw- in 2002 when he got the San Francisco Giants to the World Series. Absolutely. Not yeah, but Judge needs to have a, a postseason like A-Rod had when he finally brought the chip to New York because A-Rod was terrible yeah. in the postseason. Yeah. So when a you know what I mean? So that's the type of postseason judge needs to have to cement his legacy um, to, be, to be to be fair to a rod before the collapse before the yeah. collapse against the red sox a rod yeah. had a 348 batting average in the postseason yeah. his You're first right. postseason with the yankees that twin he killed the minnesota twins he in did. that first post oh, in God. that first series and for the first three games against boston he killed them it wasn't he until he tried to hit the ball out of Matt Clement's hand or Bronson Arroyo, whoever the fuck <laughs> yeah. it was, for the Boston yeah. Red Sox. And ever since when, when they collapsed to the Red Sox, mentally A-Rod couldn't respond to it. So he, he it, it definitely was Bronson Arroyo. I'm remembering right yeah. now. Oh, yeah. The white dude with, with the blonde braids. It <laughs> yep. always pissed me off for some reason. Um, <laughs> it just never looked natural. I'm just saying. It never, it just looked, never looked yeah, natural. Trying too um, hard, Bronson. <laughs> yeah, but no, A-Rod, before the collapse, was a 340 hitter. But to your point, he needs to have that A-Rod 2009. He needs to have that um, – that uh that Barry Bonds 2002 yeah. Aaron Judge needs to finally have that off season that silence the, the haters and with Soto in front of him I think he can absolutely do it um mm-hmm. Soto changes so much on this team whether whether it's from the swag to the approach to confidence listen Soto has changed this entire this, the entire landscape of the New York Yankees um and again I. If anybody thinks he's going anywhere, you guys are so bad. You guys are so crazy. Met fans, I'm sorry. Not a chance in hell. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And like, <laughs> actually, and like I'm not said, sorry. The Mets are always catching strays. Yeah, because they catch strays. That's an organization exactly. that catches all the strays. Yeah. Oh, man. I wish I could show you guys the group chat that I have of like Eddie Presti <laughs> and like Al Centrone and Anthony Rivera. <laughs> Shout out to the guys from the Mets yeah. Evening Brew. Their show is going to be on tomorrow night. Even though we're Yankee fans, we still support every every other creator on this Absolutely. channel. Make sure you guys show up. Make go make fun of the Mets in their chat and go have a good time with Eddie Presley. Go piss just, off Eddie tomorrow night. Just go on there to see how many f bombs Eddie drops. Oh yeah. <laughs> how about this? You gotta. You guys want to get really wasted? And take a shot every time Eddie Presley <laughs> drops an f bomb, and you'll be wasted. You'll be on the floor by the time oh, about ten minutes into the show. But um, Absolutely. we got fifteen. We got fifteen minutes left. I, I want to talk real quick. Just on Marcus Stroman, right? Because yeah. he's had an amazing start to the season. Again, the energy that he brings to the field. Opening day was amazing. Erica was up here talking about it as well. He's just – and the one thing that I'm more excited about, Marcus Stroman, whenever he's not starting and you look at that dugout, bro, his vintage Yankee shirt. Oh, man. Fly. I need I Marcus it. Stroman's connect because I need me some of those oh. shirts. I need me some of those designs on sweaters. Whoever oh, yeah. is his connect, please email me, media team at Morning Blue Sports <laughs> so we can set something up because right. you could just tell he is excited and happy to be a Yankee, bro. Listen, um, 
when he when he was going after the Yankees, I think to me that was more of him throwing a hissy fit in a sense because he wasn't a Yankee. Mm-hmm. Um, listen, the first game, you could tell. We talk about how Soto looks like he belongs here and is built for the Bronx. Marcus Stroman embodies New York. You can tell he's a New Yorker. You can tell he embodies the Yankees, and you can tell the guy doesn't – does want, wants nothing more than to be a Yankee. And he's always wanted to be a Yankee. Um, he never wanted to be a Met, never wanted to be a Blue Jay. He always wanted to be a Yankee from day one. And he's showing it. He's, uh, he's, he's great in the clubhouse. He's great in the dugout. He's embracing everybody. Um, what he, even with Trevino, you know, as bad as Trevino has been with that stick, um, the, the props that he's given Trevino and that confidence he's given Trevino um, calling games, so on and so forth. It, again, it, le- it leaps and bounds uh, what it can do for a catcher. So um, Stroman embodies New York. He's a New Yorker through and through. And if anybody's going to represent um, New York and the Yankees, it's Stroman right now. Yeah. Um, a lot of people were upset with the signing. Um, but for the amount of money that he's getting, Stroman left money on the table to be he a Yankee. Did. You yeah. know, so uh, we got to give Stroman his respect, his flowers. And hope that uh, he continues to do what he's doing. Hope that he, he hopefully he doesn't get injured. He's always had a little bit of an injury issue, but um, man, Stroman is built for the Bronx, man. Yeah, and I I don't think Marcus Stroman is going to have a zero point zero zero ERA no. for the rest of the season. He's gonna yeah. he's gonna get knocked around. He's gonna of give course. up some runs, but I think his early season success it, it grants him a grace period with Yankee yeah. fans throughout the season. If he does have a game where he gives up four runs when he gives up or if he gives up five runs, he gives up two or three home runs back to back. He'll have a grace period because of how he started. First impressions go a long way. First impression for Marcus Stroman from the outside of the organization, Marcus Stroman, Yankee fans hated him. But as soon as he put on the pinstripes, as soon as he signed that contract with the New York Yankees, Yankee fans have embraced him. Yankee fans, they are welcoming to him and he is right there along with them. Opening day, something happened um, right before he went on the mound. He went out to right field, right? And yeah. at first, people thought, oh, he's going over there to, like, sign some autographs. But he was going over there to, family. you know, his family, his his kid, his wife, his moms and stuff. And then after the game, he was asked by a reporter. And I love his answer. His answer was... He was like, no, I was, you know, I don't sign autographs before the game. He's like, I don't, I don't want that to get out there. I do apologize. I was just going over to sit, you know, embrace my family before I went on the mound. That response right there, very calm, very respectful. I don't yeah. want that to get out there. I don't, and he's letting people know I don't sign autographs before the game. He never said I don't sign autographs, period. It's just not before yeah. the game. So he's letting fans know, listen, this is the boundary I have. Respect my boundary, and we all cope with stick. I, I can't knock someone who has boundaries. No, not at all. And you know, listen, and props to him because he's kept his word. He's been off of the social media, hasn't been on there. Um, he's been locked steady on his craft, on the Yankees and and the boys. So, um, you know, listen, big shout out to Marcus Stroman. Um, we got yeah. ourselves a real one on this team, and he's only going to continue to build. And yeah, he's going to have bad games. What pitcher doesn't? Every pitcher yeah, has a bad yeah. game. Every pitcher gives up runs. It's going to happen. But the way he embraced the Yankees in that right field and the way the right field bleacher creatures embraced him, like you said, uh, I can't agree with you anymore. That's that's going to buy him uh, a couple of bad starts. So and it's going to happen. So, listen, it, it's going to happen. He's going to be perfectly fine as a Yankee as long as he's here. So when you look at the production you've gotten so far and when you look at the cost of it, he has some opt outs in his contract. Yeah, he does have some opt. But for year one. This is the thing. This is the thing you gotta understand. If he opts, if he opts in or whatever, he's picking up that th- at that third year, right? So that yeah. means he's had a bad year and he wants to pick up the third year so he can have insurance. But if Marcus Stroman pitches well and he opts out, that's good for the Yankees yeah, because that means absolutely. you're paying him eighteen to nineteen million for this type of production. If he opts out and goes somewhere else, that just means he was phenomenal for those first two years. It's a, it's a it's a win win either win-win. way. It's either we can have him for three years, a back of the end starter for 18, 17, 18, 19 mil, which is justifiable in this market yeah. in Major League Baseball for a three or four uh, number uh, three or four starter in the starting rotation. But if he's phenomenal, you only have him for two years. 
and he opts out and walks away, wash your hands. Absolutely. You know what's crazy is that I don't even think Marcus would even opt out. I think he would opt nope. in. I think he'd opt in. I think he could continue to make his money the way he's making it now and be completely happy with it. As long as he uh, is a Yankee and as long as he gets to play in the playoffs and as long as he got God willing, we win a chip. So he ain't going nowhere. No, I'm looking up his contract right now just to make sure. I think sure. it's a, I think it's a I think vesting option too. 140 for the third innings. year. Hold on. He signed a two year deal with a vesting option for the yeah. third year. Yeah. So it's a vesting option for that third year. Yeah. yeah. So it's a two year guarantee with a vested, a mutual vesting option for the third year. And exactly. it's and all at 18, at 18 million. It's literally yeah. at 18 million. Yeah, you can't you can't beat that. The price is only going to go up next season and the season after. Mm-hmm. So for eighteen million, we got ourselves a bargain. Exactly. So if he's good for these next two years, cool. Copy. You take that. He walks away. Go get your last payday before you retire. Or exactly. he doesn't do that well, and you got yourself a back the end starter in your rotation for the next three year at league wide market value. That's a win win. Absolutely, you can't you can't knock it at all. Yeah, it was a great great signing. Yeah, folks in the chat, let us know when it comes to the over and under for tonight's game. The over and under is eight and a fa- eight and a half. Like I always say, bet responsibly. Be smart. Use your brain, not your heart. Don't be a dumb dumb and lose your money. So if you're gonna re- if you're gonna go out there and bet, please do it responsibly. For me, I said it's an under. I'm going. The Yankees are winning the game six to uh, six zero oh, six to one. Marcus Stroman is going to uh, six, seven shutout innings. The bullpen is going to give up one run. I'm good with that. Any home runs prediction? You got a home run prediction for today's game, bro? Big G. Big G's going Big deep. G. Uh, this guy, okay. uh, this pitcher, Big G kills lefties, and he's definitely going to kill this lefty. So I'm going Big G, the high hand. Go, Big G. Copy. Copy. Folks in the chat, you guys have any um any home run predictions? Erica says, Rizzo bomb. The El Calzone is going to go yard tonight. And she also says on the under. Erica's picking the under for that one. Sunil's picking the under. Prediction is 6-2 to two on the score. Caputi says, I think Judge is going deep tonight, Erica. Okay, Caputi, mark that down in your books. My guy Patrick Sinclair is in the building. Patrick, I hope all is well. Um, Acevedo says, Tom Torres hits a home run. Let's see what happens. Donnie Clark you. says, Juan Soto is going deep. Fellas. Folks in the chat, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Damien, any last words for the people before we get out of here, my guy? Uh, chat, uh, good looking out. Another great show. Hector, as always, love being on here with you. Um, whoever hasn't hit that like and subscribe, hit that like and subscribe for the guys. And um, listen, man, uh, Jigga, I hope, can he play that positivity song? I, just, I love that song. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, I had an old yeah. lady in the car today. And she yeah. just heard it. She goes, what is that? I said, that's a positivity song. She goes, can you play that again? She started jamming in the back seat. So. <laughs> and Jigga played it again for us. So she was jamming. Listen, listen. <laughs> when when Jigga's daughter and her friends, when the Gen Z like the song, you know you got something good when the Gen Z like it. Absolutely. I'm going to shout out the chat before we get out of here. Donnie Clark, always appreciate you, my guy. Jorge Herrera says, Volpe with a lead off home run. He's calling Thank it you. twice. So oh, now appreciate you. Michael Caputo, I appreciate you. John Cooper, appreciate you, my guy. Of course, Erica Garcia, my friend Sierra. My guy Richie Rivera says 4-1. It's going to be a Glaber day. Appreciate everybody that's in the chat. Like always, smack the like button. Hit that subscribe button. We are on our way to 4,077 subscribers. Right after this show, make sure you guys tune into the Rangers Ice Brew. It's later on today at 6.30. If you're a hockey fan, tune into the Rangers because my guy Zook and Brendan, they do a good job covering the team. Yada, yada, yada. Peace, love. Drink your water. Say something nice. Always, mental health is important. So if you're struggling, if you're going through it, reach out. Hit one of us up. Hit up a friend. Just know we are always here for you. And until next time, deuces.